that's at their edge. But I think like his 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 weird style of um, I guess being a vocalist or whatever is really showcased on this track. Yeah. You know, because it's really him. Very, you know, minimal guitar. You know, it's really just his almost his voice. Yeah. And I love the lyrics, you know, where you're just kind of lonely and you're listening to mm. other people have fun and yeah. being alone and kind of like the lo- the loner soundtrack, bro. Yeah, I would say. But Ruby Soho, yeah, always a it's a cool cool pick me up, I guess. Nice. Track for this record. You usually skip to this song, like you can't <laughs> skip a couple you songs. Usually skip all the songs. Oh, Ruby to Soho. This one. All right, you go to <laughs> Ruby Soho, which is like boom boom boom. You go to Ruby Soho. So let's hit the next track. Cool. This is a uh, daily city train. He was an artist and a writer and a poet and a friend. In a man's life, he will take a fall. But how low he goes, it just depends. Tough Matt Freeman bass. <laughs> yeah, stand out for Damn. sure. Damn, like holds this like the glue to this fucking track for sure. How crazy is Matt Freeman, man? He's a fucking beast. It's tight, man. It's and it's, he had can- he had cancer right back. Like, really? Or he had a stroke or something like that. I feel like something like that happened, but I can't. I, well, I know that. I can't <laughs> confirm, but he was diagnosed with something that totally. kept him out of Ranson for a minute. Right? I do believe that did happen. Brett <laughs> Reed, the original drummer from 1991 to 2006, Brandon Steinecker. <laughs> Hard. Yeah. Shout out to him. <laughs> I remember the use was cool, man. I I got to see the use one time. Uh, Their first album was just. That's still, that, yeah. That was still, like, yeah. their best album. Like, like that fool, I, I feel like the U's were, like, 50 Cent, where they just, like, when they, when he that released time. that first album, and it was just, like, so badass that he tried to recreate it, and it wasn't the same. Well, they were, that at that time, they were hungry, you know, they were hungry and actually, like, sad and shit. And I know it's fucked up to say, like, when band, you know, you're like, oh, you're happy now, you suck, or whatever, but it's kind of that <laughs> you get kind comfortable. of, that kind of happens where you're just like, you're not hungry, like, kind of yeah. like Eminem, or, and, you know? and you spend so much time working on your first album from your youth to when it finally happens, yeah. and then you're expected to have a new album in a year, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that kind of pressure has to be crazy for, yeah. like, for a band like that, but, I mean, the user tight, there was another Warped Tour band. I got to see homeboy from the U's jump off like a fifteen foot speaker one time. Like uh, yeah. that's always fun to I watch. Was there. Bert, uh, Bert McCracken. Yeah. yeah, he'll throw up and do all that stuff. Got to and see- also take. I got to see with them uh, Take It Back Sunday. Yeah, so I was exposed to Take It Back Sunday. I got to see a boxcar racer one time. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, boxcar racer too. At, what was it the, the Viejas Arena, or yeah. SDSU? Yeah, yeah, whatever that spot is, that was the thing, dude. So you've and seen boxcar live? Boxcar, H two O, wow, Taking Back Sunday, The Used, and Finch. <laughs> that was a fucking lineup, dude. And like I, <laughs> and I didn't know tour too. I literally was so young, I didn't know anybody but boxcar racer, and like just being a Blink so you, fan. So you just went for boxcar. Yeah, and, okay. and I got so much more than... I remember I got kneed in the head that night in the pit for the first time ever, and I was like, I fucking love this shit. Like, <laughs> oh, like... <laughs> that, was, that was it for him. <laughs> yeah. I, now my life is ruined, but whatever. That's a I, don't whole know, I don't know how this shit that's going on, but... Right. PMA all day, right? <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy that we have all these... Um, all these stuff uh, lying around and stuff like um, all these bands 
And it's crazy, like, you become a fan of something, but you're in a different genre, and then they ask you to play in their band, and then they go into it. And it's crazy because he, I'm just, like, when I started hearing the U's, it seemed like that guy was in, was more into, like, fucking, um, uh, like, Smashing Pumpkins or grunge shit, you know, more than, but he actually made, he's actually made some good tracks with Rancid, so... So I applaud him, you know. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. For changing yeah, yeah. the style. That's a good musician. Um, Imagine going from emo to fucking ska, like, yeah. on drums. Like, as a drummer, yeah. that'd be fucking wild for me. Like That's, that, you, you can't imagine that. It's just too, so. it just takes practice, you know. So. I'm sure they grabbed him because he's probably well-rounded. You can yeah. do it all, you know. But shout out to Rancid for continuing on. Hell yeah. Yeah, dude. Because, uh, you know. Shout out, shout out to Brett Reed, left-handed drummer. Always. Yeah. I don't know if everybody realized that or not, but yeah. watching him as a kid, I used to be like, "Fuck, this dude's playing all lefty." <laughs> That's right. crazy. One of the few. One of the few. Let's go to the next track, my good sir. <laughs> Actually, it's a. Uh, this is my thirty. Um, going up, uh, going into my thirties, I listened to a song maybe like a hundred or hundred fifty times uh, during uh, the months leading up to my birthday. Um, it's significant enough because it does like kind of paint a story of like you know, it's the journey of a of an era, man. Like to me. It felt like a journey to an era, like it was like it was done, like my twenties were finally gone, and now I enter this weird path called thirties, where people are like, "Oh, if you don't hit th- when you hit thirty, you're supposed to be like this magical overnight person where you just like have your shit together," but it's totally opposite, you know. But um, actually, journey to the end have. I have fond memories with you and my brother and your brother. Yeah, man, right? Yeah, uh, when uh, Tim Armstrong jumped into uh, crowd surfing and stuff, mm-hmm. and we were all up in front, and like I was gonna say, this song always reminds me of that day and that performance because yeah. that I don't know if you remember or not, but that was recorded, right? It was recorded, and and it went on the DVD, and I remember we watched it, and we were like, "Holy shit, that's that was here!" Yeah, like we're in that crowd somewhere, yeah, and like. And I can always remember, like, I don't know if you remember that day, but we were on a stage to the right, and to the left, there was a pop-punk band called Mess that was yeah. playing. and they were, like, all oh, pushed. And they up. were really, like, yeah. and they were fucking, their set was dragging, dude, and everybody was there for Rancid, and, like... And for whatever dumb old punk reason, we decided we were all gonna start fucking giving them the finger, and the dudes from Mess saw, and they were like, they got upset about it, and they were like, hey, why don't you guys all go rush these dudes over there? And the whole crowd from over there rushed us, and we were just all standing there, and it just became like a shit show. And then finally, by the time I got back to my feet, is when they came out and they started playing radio, yeah. and then the thing just went. And like, as a kid, I remember at the time, like I was just, I wasn't really like a punk rocker. I was like. Yeah. I was into, like, Blink-182 and, like, Sum 41 and Green Day and, like, 
You know what I mean? Yeah. That I think Sum Forty One was playing that year, and that's who I really yeah. wanted to see. You know, <laughs> and and Which I um, think they recorded. Uh, that yeah, the DVD same. That, there. that whole DVD was here mm-hmm. and um, in Chula Vista, and and um, I remember they came out and like they were playing, and I saw the whole thing, dude. And like Lars and Tim came out with like the vest and the mohawk and the whole mm-hmm. thing, and like I remember kind of having a moment that day, like where I was like. Like, that's what I want to fucking do, dude. Like, yeah. that's... This whole thing is yeah. what the fuck I want to be. Like, yeah. and, like... So this song always reminds me, like, of that day and that feeling yeah. and all of us who were there, like... And just kind of feeling like the beginning of what was a lot of shit, dude. Like, in like, the San Diego scene. Like, which, uh... What brought a lot of, uh... A lot of bands, like, um... Uh, like, a total waste. Yeah, man. Shout out to The them. Abrasives... Uh, uh, disabled youth, disabled youth, career soldiers, career soldiers, Ooh, career soldiers. Uh, who else was? Uh, was I mean, there's there's tons there's of old so, names that I could drop so all day. So like, many, and um, you know, it's crazy to how this one show just like maybe like for may, maybe for everybody was just like a regular warp tour. Yeah, man. But I mean, for for. for Everybody for a has handful. a thing. I know a lot of people will probably think that shit's corny, but yeah, but for you know. a handful, it's funny because like you and I are still kind of relatively still in the scene. Yeah, and you know, for a handful of us, it was just like a a life um, altering event where it's just like it made us just like love this genre and be involved in it for for and now um, what uh, ten. 10, 20 plus years and shit? Yeah, dude, I mean, shit, that was 2003, it's 2019 now, so that's, what, 16 fucking years? Yeah, so it's like, fuck, like, it, it, it's crazy, dude, I mean, mm-hmm. how much, uh, how much, this, and particularly this song, yeah, man, just I'm, made I'm, us, like, I'm old and this is still who I am, it's, yeah. it's fucking crazy sometimes, you know, I have kids now and I have to explain to them these types of things, Dang, like, like, you gotta see your dad in this fucking, like, but, I mean, you know, it, to them, it's it's normal. This is who this is who their fucking father is. You know what I mean? Like and that's what's fucking beautiful. It, about it's it. crazy because when I was a kid, I had no idea about any of this because mm-hmm. my parents didn't know about any of this stuff. I remember as a kid, I wanted to listen to Elton John, and I used to get made fun of because he was gay. And they'd be like, "Ah, fool, you're gay. Like you want to listen to Elton John?" And like now that I'm old, like I'll listen to Elton John and be like, "Oh my god, these songs are fucking great!" Like how come no one let me listen to these things? And like. And now my kids are just growing up with these parents who are just fucking who all just over like the map love, with, like, like, taste and music and culture and, like, and I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm a fucking hipster. I don't give a fuck. But, <laughs> you know, like... No, but I get it. Cause you know I, what I mean? I like, it's totally like, different. I couldn't imagine what it has to be like for a kid coming up with somebody like that. I you was know? just um, having a conversation with somebody, like, um, not that long ago. Actually, on Saturday, <laughs> where... We were all talking about, like, how my dad would always, like, be, um, he was like, oh, this is, like, um, something that you need to know. There's three artists you can't disrespect in front of me. It was Michael Jackson, fucking <laughs> Queen, and the Bee Gees. The Bee- like, yeah. like, like, you can't, fu- like, if you talk shit about any of them, like, you would get <laughs> your ass kicked. Like, royally get your ass kicked. I'm- and, and, um, you know, it's like, again, it goes back to, like, how I got... I was just made fun of for listening to fucking, you know, um, Boy George and shit like that. Yeah, and right, George right. Michael and shit. And, you know, it's just like what when my uncles listen to, like, all these 80s tracks. How great is George know? Michael now that you're an adult? Oh, my God, right? Like, the best, dude. You're like, I get it now. Like, <laughs> like I would go into a portal. How great is Hall & Oates now that you're grown? Oh, my God. Hall & Oates, man. Hall & Oates, dude. And this is what... Um, you know, some of these guys got inspired by, bro. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't know. It's just like, yeah, yeah, they they sound a, a certain way, but that doesn't mean that's the only genre of music they're, that that they love. There's some people that love different fucking types of music, and you'd be weird, uh, weirded out by the type of music. I remember um, Mario from Mafia Rusa. Shout out mm. to Mario. Shout out to Machete. I mean, sorry, Machete Gator. <laughs> Machete Gator. Oh yeah! Oh man, I remember that. But, oh yeah! Shout out to him. Ma- shout out to Machete Gator because he um, he's one of those people that doesn't like ska. He's not a big ska fan. Okay, really? He's not really into ska. He's really into salsa, and 
I'm not kidding, dude. He is one of those people that... Uh, Does he play Timbales for salsa bands on the side? It's funny because I asked him for... Uh,